Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope that you're having a fabulous start to your week. Welcome back to our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is Polen's number eight mini. All right, so let's get this show on the road, shall we? Starting with the first question from Kyle Cheeseman. Do you prefer Louis or Chanel for small of the goods? Um, all right, so that's kind of tough, and I can honestly say both, but for different reasons. And just hear me out. It's not like I'm trying to cheat or anything like that. Uh, in terms of quality, I'd have to say Chanel. In terms of ride or die items, hands down, Louis Vuitton. When it comes to quality, in my opinion, Chanel takes the cake, at least in my experience. You guys might have experienced something different. Now, even though I haven't owned my Chanel small leather goods as long as I've owned some of my Louis Vuitton small leather goods, and the amount of time that I've had them and what I've put them through, I have yet to take any of them in for repair, either because of a pop stitch or because it's falling apart or anything like that. Whereas with Louis Vuitton, I've had to take them in for repair or have them replaced because of the quality issue that I was experiencing. And uh, my ride or die Louis Vuitton pieces are the six ring key holder, the mini pochette, and the key pouch. And those items I've had for what seems like an eternity. And when I compare my oldest uh, Louis Vuitton small leather goods to my newer small leather goods, I feel like they're night and day because I feel like the canvas was a lot thicker. I felt like it was a little bit more durable and maybe they are my ride or die because of how the, the canvas was way back when. Of course, those have hard Hardware that's starting to chip and change color. They have a ton of history. They have a ton of personality and I refuse to take them in for repair because regardless of however many times I take them in, they're going to end up wearing the same way. You know, whether it's the six key because of the trifold or the zipper on the, on the key pouch because I'm constantly using it or the mini pochette with the chain that I'm constantly moving around. So for me, it doesn't make sense to repair them because it's going to happen over and over and over and over again. But when I compare that to, once more, to the uh, to the newer uh, small leather goods that I've had within the last five years, I just felt like it was night and day. And I'll be honest with you, because of my past experience with Louis Vuitton small leather goods, I'm not as inclined to add any new pieces to my collection. I'm very, very careful with what I decide to buy next. And uh, there are, have been many new collections that I'm, I'm very intrigued on, but not enough to want to add anything else. And I prefer to go for a different different fashion house. And that's exactly what happened with Chanel. Now, don't get me wrong. I still, I still give a side eye to the price points of Chanel. Let's be honest, especially for their small leather goods. But I am very happy with, uh, with what I've experienced when it comes to their, to their quality, because it's been extremely durable and no issues thus far, whether it's lambskin or caviar or anything like that. There have been times that I have seen some pieces uh, from Chanel at the boutique that shouldn't have passed quality control. I also wanted to throw that out there because uh, it's not like Chanel is always 100% on their game. Absolutely not. Just in my experience with the items that I do have, uh, no issues thus far. And I do have some forever pieces from, uh, from, from Chanel, but I, I, I feel like if I was to compare forever pieces with Chanel and Louis Vuitton, there, there's no competition, absolutely no competition because I do love those items. I love the Croc embossed uh, CC pouch and I love the, uh, the Dorothy, the Swarovski uh, red card holder from Chanel, the flat card holder. But with those, with the mini pochette, the six ring key holder and the key pouch, I'm so crazy about them. But the fact that a lot of these items are 10 plus years and they're still holding strong, even with a few beauty marks, I have to give them credit because their canvas, their, their goods, uh, eight to 10 years ago, 15, I can't even imagine 20, 30 years ago was absolutely amazing absolutely amazing. So I don't know if I was kind of all over the place <laughs> with that question or not. It seems like it, but um, I, I have mad love for both of them. I see them uh, in completely different lights. But what about you guys? When it comes to small leather goods from Louis Vuitton or Chanel, which one do you prefer and why? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fabulous, fabulous question. Next question from Yadira Trujillo. If there was a Louis Vuitton and Minx for All collaboration, what six pieces would you choose to add your design to? Okay, so if there was a collaboration between us, I would end up picking three small leather goods and three handbags, and I don't think 
anybody would be surprised by the items that I chose, but I did want to bring them out and talk about them just for a little bit to, to give you the reasons as to why I would pick them. So as far as the small leather goods, first and foremost, hands down, no doubt in my mind, it would have to be the six ring key holder. The six ring key holder, because you guys know, I absolutely love this. To me, this is the ultimate small leather good. This is my end all be all small leather good. Uh, and the fact that this was also the very first item that I talked about on my channel channel. It was my very first review. I think it would only be fitting if it was part of that collaboration. So the six ring key holder. Uh, another one would be the mini pochette. Again, you guys know how I feel about this. Incredible small leather good. So, so amazing. And the fact that I pretty much use this almost every single day. Uh, I feel like this also would have to be part of that collaboration. The third small leather good would be the Toiletry 19. Now I know that usually with new collections they end up doing the Toiletry Pouch 26, uh, which I do think is a beautiful item. Unfortunately, it didn't end up working out for me the way that I would have liked. And we all know I tried many, many times, uh, but I know that a lot of people love the 26 because not only can you use it as a toiletry, but you can also end up using it as a clutch. Uh, but with the 19, I feel like you can still end up using this as a clutch. Of course, it's gonna be a little bit smaller, but I do find this to be a very versatile small leather good. So not only can you use it as a toiletry, not only can you use it as a clutch, you can also end up using it as a catch-all. Uh, and the fact that I can also get away with carrying anywhere from 20 to 24 lipsticks in here at any given time also makes me very, very happy. And uh, I'm sure that my fellow lip junkies will completely understand. Uh, so those are the small leather goods. As far as the handbags, uh, hands down, one of them would have to be the Neverfull MM. And the Neverfull, I chose it because not only am I a major, major tote girl, this is my ultimate tote, uh, but this was also the second video that I filmed on my channel. Of course, it wasn't the monogram, it was the Damien Zor, but still, uh, just mad, mad love for the Neverfull MM. The second handbag would be the Palm Springs mini backpack. And the reason I picked this is because this is such a versatile little bag. Yes, it's a backpack, uh, but you can also end up using it as a handbag. You can use it as a crossbody bag. You can use it on your shoulder. It's small, but it packs a punch. And I feel like that phrase has to be somewhere in, on the collaboration because I do say it often. Uh, so absolutely, it would end up being the Palm Springs Mini. Uh, now, I would also, with this one, I don't know about the other ones, but with this one, I think I would want some kind of a spin on Monogram Eclipse, and with the interior, it would have to be a type of like rose ballerine or a baby pink or something like that. That's what I think of. I think that would be an amazing combo. Can you imagine like a Monogram Eclipse kind of on the outside, maybe a little bit lighter with the color treated leather? And then with the pink interior, I feel I feel like that would end up screaming, screaming uh, mini. And the third handbag that I would end up picking would be the Speedy 25 Bandolier. And the main reason why I would pick this bag is because this is one of my first, actually I think it is my first, never say never bag. And uh, you guys know I hated this bag. I didn't like it. I swore up and down it would never be a part of my collection. And the fact that years later I uh, ate every single word uh, letter by letter. Um, it just goes to show how your taste can change and the fact that I am so insanely, insanely obsessed with this, uh, with this bag. So this one, of course, would have to be part of my collaboration. Uh, but did any of those surprise you? I don't think so, right? I think like we all saw them coming a mile away. But I'm curious, what about you guys? If you could pick six items to do a collaboration with Louis Vuitton, what items would those be and why? Let us know in the comment section down below. But awesome, awesome question. Next question from The Kate Life. Have you seen the new Givenchy and Tigona Nano? Would love to hear your thoughts. All right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of the Givenchy and Tigona Nano right now. The Nano comes in at $990 here in the States and it's available in a variety of different colors and I absolutely love it. I think it is so unbelievably cute. There are so many things that I appreciate about this item. I love the fact that it comes with a removable adjustable strap and from the looks of it, the uh, it has maybe two to three adjustments but it looks like the strap is also quite generous. So it's not going to be too short and you have a little bit more play with it so I think that's awesome. If you decide to remove the strap, I like the fact that you can end up using this either as a clutch or you can use it 
as a cosmetics case inside of your uh, your larger handbag, so I think that's awesome as well. It does have one main compartment and one slip pocket, and that slip pocket, from what I saw on the website, uh, is uh, like a credit card slot, so you can end up putting your credit cards in there, uh, and it doesn't have any exterior pockets or anything like that, uh, but still, I think that, I don't think that it's too small, and of course, it's not gonna be like this enormous bag, but I think that it has a pretty good size, and from what I saw, the measurements, uh, as far as the length, I do believe it's right under eight inches, which again, I don't think it's too bad uh, because I still feel like you can end up getting away with carrying your essentials in there if need be, or again, if you wanted to use it as a as a catch-all or a clutch or a cosmetics uh, case or what have you. Uh, so I love that. Uh, it does have the goat skin leather, but I just, I think it's so, so unbelievably beautiful. I love the fact that they didn't incorporate a handle because I also feel that that makes it that much more user-friendly. You don't have to worry about the handle kind of getting in the way. I feel that it's gonna be very easy to get in and out of. You can see everything at an angle. It's not like the opening uh, looks like it's too restricting either, which is amazing, uh, but I, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. And from the looks of it, I could be wrong, but from the looks of it, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like there might be a chunky zipper. Oh yes. If it does have a chunky zipper, that is like the icing on the cake. Because as we've talked about before, one of my favorite features from the Givenchy Antigona is that chunky zipper. I mean, I love other aspects about it, but I feel like there's something about that zipper that just gives it a little bit of an edge, right? So if they did end up incorporating it into the Nano, I think that's even more amazing. The colors that it's available uh, in, if you end up going onto the Givenchy website, they have white, gray, and black. I think those are the only three. And if you end up going like on Saks.com, they have either a nude or a pink. And I think they might have another one that the Givenchy website doesn't have. Uh, but I think that this item is going to do extremely well. And the fact that I I feel, like, I feel like it has a great price point as well, considering it is all leather. And when you take into consideration that a lot of other fashion houses have uh, something along these lines, something that's a little bit smaller, uh, they end up ranging anywhere from 1200 to 1500 We've seen some from other fashion houses that are quite similar to this for like two grand. So the fact that this is under a thousand, I think also ends up uh, adding a lot to it. I think that it has a lot of elements that people uh, might end up appreciating because it's not so busy. And especially because it is a smaller item, the last thing that you want to deal with is with a bunch of zippers and with a bunch of hardware and all this other stuff going on. So I, I'm a huge fan. I am a huge fan. And if they do end up releasing like a hot pink or a so black or a red, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I can definitely see myself going for it. But what about you guys? Are you a fan of the Givenchy Antigona Nano? Is this an item that you're interested in? Is this an item that you are looking forward to? adding to your collection, whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Next question from Ebony Wagner. I'm trying to decide. It's so hard with COVID and not wanting to go into the store to purchase. For my push present, I want a crossbody carry bag. Should I go with the Alma BB and Damia Ben, the Sienna PM, or the Neo Noe in black? Would love your advice and why. Uh, all right, so first and foremost, major congratulations on the newest member of your family. I hope you have a very safe delivery. Uh, okay, so as far as the three handbags, all of them are absolutely fantastic. The Alma BB, especially in the Damia Ben, is one of my favorites uh, because it is a small handbag, but you can still get away with carrying quite a few items inside. I love the fact that it does have the zippered closure with the dual zippers. And if you wanted added security, of course, you can always end up uh, using the lock. Although now that I think about it, I don't I don't think I've ever used the lock. If anything, I always push it off to the side. Do you guys end up using the lock? For those of you that have the Alma BB, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, but anywho, uh, the Alma BB, I think it's great. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't come with an adjustable strap, but it is removable. So that way, if you do have another Louis Vuitton strap, you can end up using that or from a different fashion house to give it a little bit more, uh, more personality. You have that option as well. Uh, so mad, mad love for the Alma BB. With the Sienna PM, I'm also so very fond of this bag. Uh, it's also in the Damia Ben, very, very carefree. It has a zippered closure, which gives you added security. And I really like the size of the PM because it's not too small and it's not too big. It's You can still get away with carrying a lot of items inside of this one as well. So I think that's wonderful. And I will also have to say that when it comes to the Sienna PM, I don't feel that it ends up protruding off of your off of the body too much. I feel like, uh, I mean, it doesn't completely lay flat up against your body, but I don't think that it's, I don't think it's too cumbersome either from the looks of it. So uh, that's another thing that I appreciate about the Sienna. Now, as far as the Neo Noe in black. Um, 
I, I think that this is such an incredible bag. And out of all three of them, as I said before, I think that they're all wonderful. This is the one that I would end up picking. Because with the Neo Noe, uh, I love the fact that not only is it lightweight, it's very carefree. I love the fact that it has compartments. And uh, even though it doesn't have uh, as much security as the other two, the fact that it does have the drawstring closure uh, that's not fussy, that you can end up tightening up so that way uh, people can't see inside of your handbag, I think is wonderful as well. It does have the adjustable removable strap which I think is an added bonus to it and it also ends up keeping its shape the other the other two do as well but I think that for a bigger bag and just the style and the silhouette that it has I feel like it really ends up maintaining maintaining its shape quite nicely so out of the three as I said previously this is the one that I would end up uh, choosing just because I feel like it has that much more versatility it has a lot more versatility than the other two in my opinion I don't think that you can go wrong with either I think that they're all insanely beautiful bags and uh, hopefully this is able to help you out and for those of you that have any of these bags let us know some pros and cons in the comment section down below or which one uh, do you recommend let us know that as well but again major major congratulations and uh, whichever one you decide to go for major congrats on your handbag as well next question from Craig Streetman I have four Chanel Deauvilles and I have one in the all leather version it's black large with silver hardware Every time I reach for it, I think of you. Is this a bag that you've considered? I just think that it suits your style so much. Um, okay, so yes, I have definitely considered going for the all leather version when it comes to the Deauville, especially since I'm so fond of the silhouette. But in all honesty, I do end up preferring other materials besides the leather, kind of like the raffia. The raffia material, in my opinion, has been one of the best when it comes to, uh, to this handbag because it's still lightweight and it's very, very durable. Uh, and because it is such a large bag, I don't feel like um I don't feel like it gets too, too heavy either. Uh, but to be completely honest with you, my biggest fear when it comes to the all leather Deauville is that history would repeat itself. And the same thing that happened with the uh, with the Celine Phantom that I had would end up happening with the Deauville. Because with the Phantom, it was this oversized uh, leather handbag and it would just get way too heavy once I started to put my items inside. So it was already heavy on its own. And then with everything else inside, I was just like, oh, there's no way. I wouldn't be able to carry it for extended periods of time. Now, the greatest thing Thing about the leather Deauville is of course that it does have uh, it does have different uh, it does have two different straps so if it ends up being too heavy on the crook of your arm or as a hand carry bag you can end up using it as a shoulder bag um, which I love that option but still I feel like I feel like that would end up happening like I I would have no control over what I ended up fitting inside of the tote because we all we all know I have a tendency to overstuff and if there's a pocket if there's a space where I can fit something else inside of a tote I will do it I feel compelled to do it you know what now that I think about it when it comes to larger totes in my collection besides the GST I end up going for other materials besides leather and of course I'm not talking about the Celine Nano luggage tote uh, because that's a little bit smaller but the GST is the only one that's all leather besides that uh, all three of my Neverfulls are canvas. Both of my Deauvilles are fabric as well as the Dior book tote. So I think that that just goes to show that I feel a little bit more comfortable with those types of materials versus going for all leather. But the all leather Deauville, I think it is absolutely beautiful and they've had some amazing collections in the past and I appreciate their details. I appreciate the colors, uh, but I think that it's a version that I appreciate from afar. Uh, and I just, I just know in my heart of hearts that uh, it might be a little bit too heavy for my lifestyle considering my past past with, uh, with some of the other bags that I've had in my collection, such as the, the Celine Phantom that I mentioned earlier. Um, but uh, until I can uh, pump the brakes and until I can figure out that I don't have to carry everything with, with me when it comes to a tote, um, it's one that I'm going to, <laughs> it's one that I'm going to have to pass on for sure. But they are beautiful nonetheless. But I'm curious, how do you guys feel about the Deauville? Do you prefer it in the fabric version? Do you prefer it in the leather version? Whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. And the last question from Ms. July 76 general question for all the luxury YouTubers that don't have daughters and don't have family members or friends that share their love for luxury. Who will inherit your handbags and luxury goods when you pass away? I know, weird question, lol. 
but I have the same conversation with my daughters, so I was wondering if you have instructed your hubby on what to do with your items. My daughters know that I will haunt the crap out of them if they don't take care of my bags even after I'm gone. I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And uh, you know what? I don't think it's a weird question at all. On the contrary, I feel like it's a conversation worth having. Why not? You're talking about the future, right? If I don't have the chance to have my own family, I do have family members that I can pass uh, my collection down to, whether it's my in-laws or my niece or my nephews. Um, and if they, if uh, my niece or my nephews are interested in luxury goods and uh, if, uh, if they want handbags or what have you, my, my closet is theirs. Absolutely. Absolutely. My closet is theirs. And if my brother ends up having kids, they're more than welcome to my closet as well. Now, if they're not interested in luxury goods, I would end up leaving instructions to sell my entire collection and have the money go towards a charity that is near and dear to my heart. That's what I would end up doing. But to be completely honest with you, I don't think, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, mostly because of my niece. My niece is like the cutest thing on the planet. She is so, so girly. Um, she only wears pink and purple and glitter. Uh, so come on, <laughs> come on, right? Uh, but she only wears pink, purple, and glitter. She always has her nails done. She wears like a lip gloss or a lip balm. She has those little purses. She's into Barbie right now, like majorly into Barbie. So I, I, I know my collection would end up going, uh, would end up going towards her. Um, but uh, it's so funny too, because whenever we end up visiting, she, she loves to look inside of my handbag, and I feel like we're kind of doing a what's in my bag. She's all Aunt Minnie, what's this? She has like this, this cute little mousy voice. She's all Aunt Minnie, what's this for? What's this for? It's so adorable adorable but uh, she'll go through like uh, my lipsticks and she's all let me see the color let me see the color or just whatever we have a blast we could literally sit there for hours but um, yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where my collection would end up going uh, or if uh, again if my nephews if they're into luxury goods or what have you go for it absolutely go for it but <laughs> I can already pick. I can already picture it with my collection now, type of thing. But uh, if that doesn't end up happening, then I do have a backup plan uh, set in place. But what about you guys? When it comes to your collection, who will be inheriting your collection? Will it be your kids? Will it be someone else? Whoever it might be, let us know in the comment section down below. But great, great question. All right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday Q and A. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help you guys. Had some awesome questions this week. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And I will see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. How sad, it completely cut off my ending. What I was trying to say is make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.